Now, the first question, obviously, is for you, Christopher. Uh, since Mr. McGrath has just finished, I would put the question to you, which is, if, if God does not exist, on what basis can anyone say this action is right or this action is wrong? So whoever asked that only just came into the room, right? You know, I can't believe that I didn't say what I thought about it. But, but I won't repeat it because actually what Dr. McGrath just said, I thought was unusually good on this point. You'll recall what he said on the Dostoevsky matter. Um, if God exists, we have to do what he says. If he doesn't, we can do what we like. Now, just apply this for a second in practice and in theory. Um, is it not said of God's chosen people, and is it not said to, uh, to them by God in the Pentateuch that they can do exactly as they like to other people? They can enslave them. They can take their land. They can take their women. They can destroy all their young men. They can help themselves to all their virgins. They can do what anyone who had no sense of anything but their, their own rights would be able to do, but in this case with divine permission. Doesn't that make it somewhat more evil? In Iran, where I've been, I've been to all three axes of evil countries, uh, by the way, and I think I'm the only writer who can say that. You're not allowed to sentence a woman who is a virgin to death, even though she may have committed, in the eyes of the mullahs, a capital crime, perhaps by showing her hair too often or her limbs. She can't be sentenced to death. But religious law means she can be raped by the revolutionary guards and she's not a virgin anymore. And then they can kill her. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law used to be considered the motto of Satanism, as I recall. Divine permission given to people who think they have God on their side enables actions that a normal morally normal unbeliever would not contemplate the mutilation of genitalia of children. Who would do that if it wasn't decided that God wanted it? Just as when a poet in England gets the poet laureate ship, they start to write drivel instead of poetry for some reason. It's the, it's the king's scrofula the other way around. Morally normal and intelligent people find themselves saying fatuously wicked things when this subject comes up. The suicide bombing community is entirely faith-based. The genital mutilation community is entirely faith-based. Slavery is mandated by the Bible. People keep, you keep hearing how many abolitionists were Christians. Well, it was about time that they took a stand against it, having mandated it for so long. So it's, 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 it's not even a tautology, I think, to say that there's a... That, uh, there's a relationship between the human impulse to do evil, to be selfish, to be self-centered, to be greedy, and a contrast between that and faith, because given only faith, mountains can be moved, and millions of people who would never normally acquiesce in evil are brought to it straight away and with ease, and with self-righteousness. There. That's my answer to that. And, and the questioner did not answer my challenge. Name an ethical statement made or action performed by a believer in the name of faith that couldn't have been by an, an infidel and name, if you can, this is easier, a wicked action that could only be mandated by faith and then you'll see how silly your question was wherever you were.